hello friends welcome to the video tutorial of c programming and in this video we are going to study the concept of dynamic memory allocation for array of string and for that we are going to use the concept of array of pointer before this video we saw the concept of array of strings which is nothing but 2d array of character okay so we already saw this concept 2d array of character which is nothing but two dimensional array of characters okay so basically whenever we use 2d array of characters for storing array of string okay there is lots of memory wastage and to avoid that we are going to study this concept of dynamic memory allocation while studying one dimensional array I already explained the functions related to dynamic memory allocation so if you are not aware of that part please watch that video and I'm going to attach the link in the description below. So first of all, let me show you how memory get allocated for array of string using 2D array of character. So this is the pictorial representation of 2D character array or you can say array of strings and we already saw this concept in a last few videos so if you are not aware of that part please watch that video okay so as you can see here whenever we allocate two dimensional array of character for a string there is little bit memory wastage so here as you can see at least three bytes are getting waste okay so to avoid this wastage what we are going to do we are going to allocate a memory dynamically for each and every string okay so let us see how it will be okay now let us understand the process of dynamic memory allocation first and then after we will implement it so first of all what we are going to do we will accept one string from a user and we will keep it in one temporary string okay so let us declare that temporary string first so this temporary string will contain only one string okay so whatever you will enter it will goes in that temporary string first okay so suppose assume that user entered mango okay basically while declaring it we specify it of 20 bytes but this string has only five characters okay so how much memory is required to store this string five plus one why plus one plus one is for this null character so what we are going to do we are going to calculate the length of this string okay so we are going to calculate the length of this string so this will gives me the memory requirement of that particular string okay and what we will do we are going to allocate l plus 1 bytes of memory so let us allocate it so in this case it requires how many bytes 6 bytes 3 4 5 6 right so 6 bytes of memory get allocated so let us say the address is something double three double zero okay so once memory get allocated what we have to do we have to transfer this contain from temporary memory location to this memory location so let us copy it so this is nothing but a copy operation mango okay now next time when again user enter a string what we will do we will again collect it in this temporary string so this contain get overwritten so say this time user enter banana okay so how many memory requirement is there actually it requires seven characters okay basically the length is six but plus one character is for what for this null character so again what we are going to do we are going to allocate seven bytes of memory okay one two three four 5, 6 and 7 okay so let us call this memory location as 5151 5, now what is the next step whatever is there in temporary string transfer it to this memory location because here we just allocated a memory content are still in a temporary string so b a n a n a n slide zero so we did just a copy operation so we have to use str cpy function here now you will continue this process as many times as much you have 
a number of strings means in this case we have five strings to store so what you will do you will repeat this process five times now whatever address from that you will get you will store it in one array okay and now since your array is going to store the address that array will be array of what pointers now what we are going to store we are going to store this addresses and addresses are always held by pointers so for that we need one array of pointer now since our addresses are of type character okay my pointer array is also of type what character so say ptr of 5 okay so it will have five locations okay 1 2 3 4 5 so this is zeroth location first location second location third location fourth location and now this every element will hold the address of a string so the zeroth position will hold the address of this string which is nothing but this one so it is pointing to this address this will hold the address of second string right and so on okay see look at here this is also what this is also array so definitely it will have zeroth element first element second element third element and fourth element but instead of storing a value now it is storing what it is storing a address okay now definitely if we compare this part and this part definitely we can save at least 15 bytes of memory at the most we can save 17 bytes of memory but at least we can say 15 bytes of memory if this is our input data so in this way dynamic memory allocation is helpful to us okay now let us understand this process practically and first of all we are going to write a code for this okay so let us declare the required variable first okay so i am going to write a code in a main function directly so first of all we need character array one character array to hold a temporary string okay say approximately of size 20 then one then we need one array of pointer okay and that array will hold the addresses of character variable that's why this is character pointer array so let us call it as ptr and approximately it going to hold a five addresses that is nothing but a five string so that's why i'm declaring it of size 5 now here we need to calculate a length of our string right so let me declare one integer type of variable okay as well as we are going to iterate this process five times so we need one index variable i okay or you can say control variable also okay now as i told you first of all we are going to accept the string and we are going to keep it in this temporary string okay so we have to perform this process five times so let me include the loop here for i is equal to 0 i less than 5 since i am starting with 0 i am terminating at less than 5 okay so here you can give one user friendly message to the user print f enter name or enter fruit whatever enter fruit okay now let us scan it it in temporary string so percent s temp here you can use get s also okay now we kept a string in a temporary string variable now the next step is to calculate the length of a string so we can allocate a memory dynamically so l is equal to str len of temp so this will gives me a memory requirement of that particular string now we will allocate a memory using malloc function so malloc function actually returns the address of type void and we are going to store it in a character pointer that's why i'm type casting it and i already explained this function so please watch that video for more details so malloc 
again here we are going to use size of operator so that will give me a correct memory requirement for character data type okay so size of operator actually gives a memory requirement for your data type so here we calculated the memory requirement of a single character and we are going to allocate a memory for l plus one character so that's why i'm multiplying it here now whatever address i'll get what will i do i'll keep it in this pointer array so i'll say ptr of i okay so what is the value of i is currently it is zero so whatever memory you will allocate it goes at zeroth position of your array and when i value increment so for the next data the memory will get stored at ptr of 1 and so on okay now one more step remains still your contents are in temporary variable or temporary string we have to transfer it to this allocated memory and for that we have to use str cp1 string copy ptr of i comma 10 okay so what this does it will transfer the content of temporary memory or uh, temporary string to this pointer location okay or the allocated memory location now whenever you want to process this array or whatever operations you want, you want to perform in this array you have to specify the array name along with its index okay basically what happens whenever we want to perform any operation on string consider this case what we are doing we are providing the base address of a string okay and our array of pointer is also holding a base address of string so let us switch to our previous page look at here okay so here our each and every memory location is pointing or is holding the base address of array so suppose i want to print this string so what i have to say i have to say put s or printf whatever convenient to you put s our array name and then after the index of array which location you want to print whether you want to print zeroth memory location one first memory location or whatever okay so let us see this part practically so it will be more clear to you so as you can see here i already included the required header files that is stdio.h and string.h string.h because we are using str len and str cpy library function i require i declare the required variables then we are going to repeat this process five times because my array size is five okay so first of all we are accepting a string from a user and we are keeping it in a temporary string then we calculated the length of string then we allocated the memory address and then after we kept that memory address in our array of pointer and whatever contents are there in my temporary string i copied it to my allocated memory location okay so this process will repeat five times or loop is just written to print the string only okay so it's just printing string stored in my array of pointer so let us execute this program and let us observe the output okay okay now i am entering the fruit name say mango apple papaya banana orange okay and we are just printing that fruit's name that's it look at here all the fruit's name get printed serially as we accepted okay so i hope you enjoy this video and if you have any doubt, definitely you can write it into the comment sections. In the next video, we will see one more example based on this. Thank you for listening.